Mix It Up With Maui, Episode 1. Action. Welcome to Episode 1 of Mix It Up With Maui, which name will probably change because we don't know what the name of this podcast will be. But since you guys harassed me every day saying, Maui, you just started a podcast. Maui, we want to hear audiobooks. Maui, we want to hear you. Here you are. So here I am. And with that being said, if you don't know me, my name is Maui, and I'm part comedian. I'm a self-love enthusiast. I've written three books, self-love journals. I'm working on my fourth book, which you guys are going to love. And everything that I write, everything that I talk about, everything that I'm about is about loving yourself more, focusing on yourself, not settling for less, and not allowing anybody to give you some bare minimum ass shit. So with that being said, this episode, what I want to talk about is food court love, okay? If you don't know what food court love is, I'm glad you asked because I am going to explain. Whenever we are in the mall and we're walking through the food court, no matter what mall you are in, there is a Chinese restaurant that gives you a sample of sesame chicken, a general toast chicken on a, on a um, toothpick. Although you have no plans on eating anything at this restaurant, just by habit, we take the chicken. The chicken not even that bad, but we don't even plan to eat there. But we kind of have this tendency to accept what is continuously available to us. So you're asking, well, Maui, why does he keep coming over my house if he don't want to be in a relationship? And he said he doesn't want to be with me. I'm glad you asked me again. Let me explain. At your house, there is a good woman there. There is some warm vagina. There is your world famous Alfredo. There is a television and a comfortable bed. And did I say vagina? Although he doesn't want to be in a relationship, he said that he's not looking for anything serious. Thank you very much. You continuously to offer, hey, am I going to see you tonight? Are we going out? And nine times out of 10, this is a person that you have not been, on out, been out on a date with somebody who has not courted you properly, somebody who gives you nothing more than bare minimum ass shit and gives you sex. And it's like, we've learned to just accept this person at whatever capacity that we can have them because we, we love being around them. We're attracted to them. They're fun. They're funny. They're good company. But it's nothing more than sex. A person will continue ex- to accept what we are making a- a- available to them. Ultimately, we got to stop overextending ourselves and just take a hint. And that shit might be a hard pill for some of us to swallow when somebody don't want us. And it's like, why can't you see I'm a good woman? Luxury does not need to convince. Rolls Royce ain't out here making commercials. Neither is Bentley trying to say, come buy me. We having a sale. Come try a car. Come down to the lot today. Luxury doesn't need convincing. And real is going to recognize real. And a good man that sees a woman that he wants to be with and that he is interested in does not need some full court ass love. He does not need you handing out your love on a goddamn toothpick. Saying, here, take this. I'm a good woman. Come and see. Come try. Come find out. Come reap all the benefits that you will have of being in a committed relationship with me without the title, without anything. And what desire would this person have with pursuing you further if you're giving them so much for free? I've given you nothing, really, when you really think about it. When you really think about the person that you like the most or the person who text messages your ass will jump for, all of those things, what have they given you outside of the dick is good and he funny? Okay, play with yourself. Play with yourself and then eat something before you go see that man because you might be hungry or horny, either or. That's the biggest thing. I feel like sometimes a person just might catch us slipping at a place in our life where we're craving companionship. This is not a person that you even typically be going for, but he caught you slipping at a place where you're a little vulnerable, where you craving companionship, where it's 2 in the morning, I'm bored, I ain't got shit to do. I already know what to expect from you. But the more, if you are really, if you're one of those persons who are really in tune with when you have sex with somebody and you're exchanging chemistry and you're exchanging emotions and all these different things of really looking at sex as a real ritual and a spiritual act, you will realize that sometimes we having sex with a person we like a lot and afterwards we feel horrible. I'm laying next to you like, I should have stayed home. Why do I even have sex with you? Our body and our soul is rejecting the energy that this person has because we know that this person don't really give a fuck about us. They out here running around town having sex with anybody. We know that it's not a genuine, meaningful connection that we're actually sharing. This is just the only thing that we can offer to keep this person attention. If you take the pussy away from some of these people, they wouldn't want to come and watch no movie with you. 
They wouldn't bring you no soup if you were sick. They wouldn't check on you like, hey, how you doing? It was so crazy. And what, and something I personally feel like people, more women should pay attention about, especially if they have children, is you talking to a guy that you really, really like. He never says like, hey, how are you and the kids doing? Y'all need anything? Like no interest is even, never brings up your kids, never asks about them, don't care where they at, who they with, doesn't say, hey, you want to go? You've been talking for years. Never say, you want to go to Dave and Buster's or something? No. He wants to figure out how are you going to get a babysitter so I can fuck you tonight? How are you going to get a babysitter so you could come over to the crib so I could pull up on you? Can I spend a night? I feel like that is like a red flag to me, whereas though a person really isn't interested in building anything with you because when a person really likes you or a person even loves you, they love the extensions of you. Like if I care about you, I love your homies. I love your mama. That's your mama. Hey, mom. Like we love the extensions of the people that we really care about. We're interested in like, oh, you like basketball? Oh, like, well, what do you like about it? Like we, we as women become so interested and so involved in the things that the person that we love are interested in. So think about, are you the one overextending? Are you asking more questions than this person? Are you going out your way? Hey, have a good day. Be safe. I, well, make sure you look both ways when you cross in the street. I love you. Be careful. And they're texting you back. Thanks. Good looking. Cool. All right. On my way. Like, what? You got to catch yourself in the midst of that when a conversation is dying down and they cool with it, that you're kind of always trying to look and revive it because you just love talking to them. Make sure that you are choosing a person that you actually like because it's actual mutual chemistry there, reciprocation, and if a person don't know what reciprocation is, when I dip, you dip, we dip together. That's what it is. It ain't me dipping, me grabbing your arm so you could dip too because you really don't want to dip with me. You was over here dipping with the bitch last week. That's what reciprocation is, just in case don't nobody know what it is. And when you find yourself overextending, pouring into people that don't pour back into you, I can promise your ass that you will look back on all of this and feel like I poured into everybody else and I have nothing left for me. I don't even know who I am in them anymore. I'm giving so much of myself to all these different people and I'm not getting shit back in return. That's why even when people say like, oh, I love my love is unconditional. I'm, ultimately, we want the condition to be that it's going to be reciprocated and I'm going to be loved back. Why the fuck would you spend years loving something that, that doesn't have any love for you? Something that does not love you back. And then I don't think that people really understand how fast time go by. I know they say time go by when you're having fun and stuff like that. You look back on happiness and somebody that actually loved you or somebody that genuinely cared about you. And you will look and realize, damn, I done wasted six years being with this goddamn person because I was holding on to how nice they treated me five years ago. Holding on to how much I enjoyed it in the beginning, how much a, of a thrill it was, thinking that if they could just go back to that person, then we would be happy. If they could just stop cheating, we would be happy. If they could just stop, I ain't trying to hear none of that shit. I'm just going to have to learn to accept people for exactly who and where they are at this place in their life. And if it doesn't align with who I am, where I'm going, where I'm going, then I have to learn to let that shit go. Because what's meant for me will never require force. It will never require me to have to force some shit. I will never have to force you or convince you to be with me if you are truly meant to be with me. And that's that. Don't walk around here with no full core ass love, handing out your heart on toothpicks, trying to get somebody to, to see how much of a good woman that you are, trying to convince somebody that you are deserving for reciprocation, to be courted properly, to be dated. Why are we out here? Next topic, yes, glad you asked. Next topic is, why are you out here begging for dates? Why are you asking this man? So are we going out tonight? So what are your plans this weekend? When you taking me out, why are you doing all of this asking? He wants to see you. If he wants to see you, he needs to plan something. You're not going to what you do on me all day, sir. I'm doing the same shit that I was doing about three hours ago. And that's that. I understand some of us, we really like somebody. And this is for the people that really be liking people. And they be fucking shit up in the beginning because they like them too goddamn much. Control yourself, okay? Control yourself and control your emotions. In the beginning, he ain't never asked you to take you nowhere. Ain't never asked, can I take you out to dinner? What is, what is you asking him? Well, you can, I cook dinner tonight. I made Alfredo. Here you go with this goddamn shrimp Alfredo that you always try and make for somebody because it's easy to make. You over here with this Alfredo trying to get this man to come over. You set the tone for how you want to be loved and how you deserve to be treated, okay? 
So let me tell you something. You invite this man over in the beginning for this Alfredo. Okay, this is Alfredo is good. Okay, I like me some Alfredo too if you wanted to know. You invite him over for this Alfredo. No dates. We get into the habit of, oh, he comes over for dinner. We be chilling, watching movies and stuff. That's cute. A couple months go by, still no date. You finally tell him, like, when we going out, he's looking like, for what? You know, these were things that when you was creating your boundaries and your expectations at the beginning, this was this was the time where may the best man win. When you were supposed to be dating properly, where you were supposed to be seeing exactly what the person that you liked or was interested in had to offer. But nope, here you go, bringing somebody over to the crib for some Alfredo. Now we're in a routine and Netflix and chilling all the time. And he doesn't see the need to take you out for, for what? Take you out for you to give me some pussy. I've been getting it. And you've been giving it to me for nothing, really, for conversation and for company. Why would I buy the whole cow when I'm getting the milk already for free? For free 99 for almost close to nothing. Why would I waste my money on it? If you need some time to think about it, go on ahead. Why would I buy the whole goddamn cow when this girl, she cooking for me? Her food better than a restaurant, if you ask me. She nasty. She don't really be tripping. She don't ask no questions. Her house is clean. Her kids don't be there. They got fruit snacks and juicy juice. They got all types of stuff in the crib. Take you out for what? In the beginning, this is when you were supposed to tell somebody, like, oh, you got to court me properly. Or where are we going on a date? And I would pay attention to a person that never asked or offered. Oh, okay, he ain't really about nothing. He ain't trying to do nothing. Now, if you see potential in somebody that's actively trying and they say, I ain't been in a relationship in a long time. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Can you help me? That's different because that's a man with effort. We like men with effort that's asking questions because they want to love you better. Okay? But we're not seeing potential where there is no potential. We're not creating shit and falling in love with the fairy tales that we create in our mind and then freaking over-exaggerate in our place, place in people's life. That's what we're not going to do. I'm going to take it for exactly what it is. He's not that interested in me. He must not like me as, that much. I'm going to take a mixed signal as what it is, a no. Uh, he cool off me. Instead of giving him a reason to double back or if, a reason to be interested, you'll see somebody not really feeling you like that or they being wishy-washy and iffy like, watch, when he come over, I'm going to be nasty. That's going to teach him. It is pussy everywhere. It is pussy everywhere. I promise you, especially if a man got a lot of things going on for himself, guess what? He ain't really going, he going to take it. Because he ain't going to turn that, no pussy down. But that is not enough to have somebody. To tr Come on. I don't want that to be your end all to be all. And your first thought of how to keep a man or get him more interested. I'm going to give him some pussy. I'm going to give him the most valuable part of myself. The most intimate, valuable part of me. That's what I'm going to give him. It's You know, if I'm really nasty and really put him on him tonight, he's going to change. He's going to act different. He's going to want a girlfriend. He's going to want a relationship. I don't want that to be what you gambling with. I don't want you to be gambling with your house. I want you to be gambling with like a text message here and there, a FaceTime call, like something small. Not you gambling with, let me, I'm a fuck him. That's not it. I don't think that is going to, that's not it for me. So in my new book, um, it was a chapter and it was called Pussy Talk. And it was basically about how like this generation doesn't really value sex as much as they did before because we can get it so easily it's not really nothing to work for you can find somebody that's trying to lie and it's like okay cool so we don't see a reason to value what we don't have to work for and it's really like that when it comes to meeting people and sex and give having sex with people so fast i know some people say well the vibe is there and going off the energy and the chemistry and stuff like that that's all cool but i truly feel like it ain't no loss if you wait yeah, the vibes is cool. It might be a strong sexual connection and chemistry, but what's the real, what's the loss if you wait? Even if the chemistry is strong and deciding to not act on our sexual urges and not act on our, our lust, ain't really going to be no loss there because the only time us as women are really upset after we have sex with a man is when he turned out to be who his rep representative was. That's when we'd be mad, when we'd be a little bit disappointed, but we'd be more so mad that I fucked you. You know what? You a clown... And I, you turned out to be a nut. But I'm really upset because I had sex with you. And I wish I could have my pussy back. I wish I had a receipt for it and I could just go get it back from you. But since I can't, now I'm upset. That's what I'm mad about. I'm mad because I want to have my pussy back. And I'm mad that I gave you some. That's why I'm disappointed in myself. I ain't even really mad at you. I'm disappointed in myself because I shouldn't have gave you nothing. I was telling myself, don't give you nothing, but I gave you some anyway because I'm crazy. Okay? That's why we mad. So I... <laughs> so I... <laughs> 
I really, I really feel like wait, wait and be patient. Fill people out and date properly. Y'all be killing me when y'all be saying, Molly, I don't know how to, I don't know how to date properly. Once I like one person, that's the only person I want to talk to. Girl, you killing me. What do you mean? Once I like one person, that's the only person I want to talk to. You don't know him like that yet. Like, you don't know him that well. What are you talking about? Dating properly. Talking to several people. You ain't got to be fucking all of them. That's not what I want you to do. So don't you put words in my mouth because I ain't never say that. You could talk to about three different people. Made a best man with the most effort win. And that's that. Okay? And it's about... I want you to talk to three people, but you have some non-negotiables, so you ain't out here just talking to anybody. To have five things that you're not willing to budge on. I want him to be religious, into sports, funny, he family-oriented, whatever, he's a vegan. I don't know what y'all be into these days. But five things that you know what, my partner got to have this shit. This is what he got to have. And when you talk to somebody, if they don't have about three of them, then what are you talking to them for? I don't understand how some of y'all are super religious, and then you go be with this man that is an atheist. And you're like, I really love him. Do you think that your God, this is your soulmate that your God sent to you? Come on, like, let's be realistic here. But no, Maui, I'm going to change him. I'm going, that I'm accepting people for exactly who they are unless they are in a place when they're willing and actively trying to change already for themselves. You can't change for me. You can't change for me. So with the dating properly and you talking to three guys, this becomes easy because you're not blowing up. You're not blowing up the first guy. Let's say Jerome, Kyle, and David. You're not blowing up Jerome phone because you talking to Kyle and David too. You don't got all your eggs in one basket. You talking to Jerome. You was really excited to see him. He ended up standing you up. If you was only talking to him, you'd be super mad, super pissed on Instagram, making subliminals, subbing. Guys are weird. You know what? Back to being single, focusing on me. About to do a big chop. Whatever it is that you're going through this week, okay? Now, if you was talking to Kyle and David, too, you didn't even really notice that, okay, Jerome sent me up. Okay, cool. So tomorrow I'm going out with Kyle. So when Jerome texts me, you're going to get ignored. We're not really tripping because you're not my man. And I'm not I'm not carrying you as such. When we put all our eggs in one basket, be super hype, hype about a guy, here you go, deleting everybody's phone numbers that you used to talk to, blocking all these guys on in the, your page. Now you posting all these freaking love songs on your Insta story. Here you go with Tamiya, so into you. You burning me out, child. I always want to, y'all, y'all play that song for every new person that y'all talk to. So here you go. If you talking to different people, filling them out, going on dates, really getting, taking this time to actually getting to know different people, who you got the most chemistry with? Who you have a natural connection with? Who has the best conversation? Who you have the most fun with? You can really make a better decision because you're not settling for what's available. You're choosing. You're choosing what you like and what you're in interested in. When we end up talking to this person, cutting everybody off, this one person, we mad, we upset. We put our eggs on all in one basket. Stop it. And to anybody that wanted to know, to anybody that actually cared, this is juice. Wine glasses make me feel grown and sexy. I'm drinking, ooh, I'm drinking my juice out of a wine glass. It makes me feel grown like an adult. Like I pay rent somewhere special. Learn how to date properly. We're back to the subject at hand. Learn how to date properly. Learn exactly what it is that you're looking for. And make sure that you are at a place in your life where you know your worth. And if you know what you bring to the table, how valuable you are, nobody will be able to come into your life and negotiate what, what you're worth. Nobody will be able to come and lower your price. Because if you, ain't, when you, if you ain't sure, a person will be able to come into your life and set the price for you. And when we are so excited for company or so excited for companionship or it feels so good right now to be loved, we will jump on the first, okay, that's all I'm worth. It might not be much, but it's more than what the fuck the last guy was giving me. So I must be making progress. So I could settle for him. Listen, this is a little off topic, but you know, I got three personalities. So I need to bring this up too. Okay. 
I always say that love is supposed to feel like home, okay? And if you read my first book, The Lotus One, you know all throughout the book, I said love is supposed to feel like home, a place where you can relax. It should feel like you worked a 13-hour shift and you come home and you just take off your bra and lay in bed. Like safe, comfort, everything, okay? And then Lotus Two, I had told y'all, like, I was thinking, you know, and I know love is supposed to feel like home, but what if I was just homeless? If I was just homeless, then... I would just be happy that I'm laying my head anywhere because I'm not on the streets. And I was in a relationship like that, whereas though I didn't know my worth and I met somebody and I felt like this is home. Like, you see what I'm saying? Not realizing that I'm in the freaking, I'm in a sh- homeless shelter. Where's other people up in there? I can't sleep. I'm sleeping with one eye open. I'm getting cheated on. They stealing from me up in here. I'm not realizing I'm in a shelter because I'm just happy that I'm not laying in the rain anymore. Like I'm happy that I'm not laying in the cold. I'm happy that I got a roof over my head for once. But if I was patient, had I worked on myself, I would have knew that there actually was a freaking beach house condo somewhere waiting for my ass. But nope, was in a freaking shelter just being grateful. You know what? He ain't the best man in the world, but you know, I ain't outside no more. And that's sometimes we be at a place like that in our life where you know what? He ain't the best guy. But at least I ain't single like the rest of them lonely ass bitches that ain't got nobody. Like we compare our little crumbs to somebody else's dang got shit so that we could feel a little bit better about our situation. Like, yeah, yeah, it ain't the best thing in the world, but it's more than her. But it's not exactly what we want either. If you had to choose, that would not have be what you, have been what you chose. That's what we end up settling for because it's what's available. Had, had I known my worth then, I would have been in a beach house condo a long time ago like I am now. Somebody whose love feels so good. Somebody laying next to a person that you don't got to question. But sometimes we are just at places in our life where having a little piece of someone or having a little piece of something feels better than having nothing at all. And then a lot of times, hold on, let me slip sip my juice. Hold on. A lot of times when y'all dating properly or y'all not dating at all because y'all waiting for Jerome to come around and act like he got some goddamn sense, whatever the case may be, you still holding on to history. A lot of times when we in these relationships with these people whose love are is a shelter, you got your one eye open and stuff like that. There's a bunch of other girls up in there. I don't mind my business though. We end up <laughs> taking these people back continuously and forgiving them for ourselves. Not even because we actually forgive them, if that makes sense. We're forgiving them for ourselves. We're tired of crying. We tired of wondering what the fuck you doing. If you with that girl again, we tired of looking at your story. We tired of keep texting you, creating conversation. We're tired of worrying. We tired of listening to the Destiny Child album. Is she the reason that my calls couldn't reach you? We're tired of all of that crying and sad shit. So you know what? I don't really forgive you for what you did, but I'm going to forgive your ass for me because I need you to come home. I need you to come home. I need you to be my man again. I need to stop worrying, okay? I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out. And you know what? It's time for you to come back. So do you forgive him for cheating? Do you forgive him for being a liar? Not really. And that's why every time you upset or every time y'all have a disagreement or argument, you bring the same shit up over again. Because you didn't give you didn't give yourself a, enough time to heal because you was too worried about what the fuck he was doing. That shit still hurt and it still bothers you. But you know what? Being with him and knowing what he's doing is more important to you the healing your wounds. So you know what? You're going to put a Band-Aid on it and invite him back in. And some of y'all, even when it comes to y'all having some time alone or some space and stuff like that, you, a person will have dogged your ass out beyond this goddamn world. And I commend you. And my heart goes out to you, beloved, okay? Dog you out to in this world. And you will still be faithful to them because you love being able to point the finger. You love being able to say, you did this to me. You did this to me and I did nothing. I was in here and I was being a good woman. And I was cooking dinner and I was raising these babies. And you was out here in this world and you was cheating on me, okay? That, you, love, you love knowing that you're getting freaking the short end of the stick, but you're a good woman, okay? So that when the arguments come, you're able to point the finger, not me, okay? And this is where the Aries fire sign is going to come out, okay? You, you did what? I made a, marath- made a marathon continue because I'm going to do it back and it's going to hurt. And when I do it, you're going to need a perk because I'm not playing the same kind of games that you was playing, them little sneaky games and stuff like that. Because one thing I will tell you, okay, and this is what I know to be true. 
when a woman cheat, we ain't out here like y'all, all lusty, penis all thinking for you, a little horny, dick all throbbing, and you want to put it into something. That ain't what I'm doing. Whoever I go out here with, please believe they have something that I begged your ass to do. They are somebody that I can absolutely see myself being in a relationship with. Y'all done had a weekend down in Miami, y'all act a fool. Y'all go to LA, you done found somebody off Instagram, you're trifling, okay? I'm strategic, and not only... Will I be strategic and not messy like y'all asses who cheating and come in the house and start arguments with your girlfriends and now she's annoying and she's getting on your nerves. You're not attracted to her. She need to lose some weight. I'm coming in and I'm calm and I'm relaxed and I'm cooking and I love you and I care about you, baby. And I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed because I know whenever you fuck up, sir, there is someone waiting to take your spot. And that is what I know to be true. I'm not tripping over nothing because I'm waiting for you to fuck up. I'm waiting for you to fuck up. I'm waiting for you to need this perk. If you got a woman at home or you got a man at home that has been playing with you, put your foot down. And if you got a good woman at home and you've been taking her for granted, I'm going to need for you to start showing her a little bit more respect and start valuing her. One good woman by your side that loves you unconditionally. I say this every day. I said this yesterday. One good woman by your side that loves you so much is worth more than 55 hoochie mamas. And I know y'all men love some new pussy. I know y'all do. Is worth more than 55 hoochies. You creating a life with the woman that you love. This is your best investment, okay? No matter how many good ideas your homies come up with and they want to flip a house with you, no matter how many good opportunities they present to you, you investing in your woman will always be the best investment. You know why? Because, you know, your homies and it's ego and y'all going back and forth and one of them irresponsible. He want to pop bottles on the weekends and you want to save your money. Your woman will listen to you and will trust you to lead. Okay. Your woman will tr listen to you, trust you to lead, multiply anything that you give her. She got the great ideas. You know, she the brains and stuff like that. She'll find some way to get some money. Th that's the best investment for you to build with the person that loves you so much and won't throw the shit that she's she's done with you in your face. Your homies and say, oh, I fronted you this for the for the house, and I did this, and they counting favors and stuff like that. Your woman doesn't do that. She doesn't do that. She hasn't done it this far. Your homies will be the first person that will throw some shit back in your face. Oh, my homies would never do that. Those my bros. My bros not like that. See, I wish you held your woman to the same standard, and that's why you disgust me, you filthy animals. Y'all love y'all homies more than y'all women. It's really starting to make me question all of you. And that is what I know to be true. Y'all love y'all homies more than the women who would do anything for you. You're disgusting. You disgust me on a daily and you don't surprise me at all. Ladies, learn to be learn to date properly so that you don't have to look back on your life and realize that it's a life that you settled for with a filthy animal man that refuses to change, that is still trying to live out his glory days back from when he was in high school. Always talking about a whole old ass story from when he used to be the man. Learn how to date properly so that you could be with a person that is at a place that you are at in your life too. A person that knows how to properly communicate that doesn't try to flip it when you express your feelings. It doesn't make you feel guilty for saying how you feel. It doesn't water down your emotions and saying you tripping. A person that listens to you, a person that values, respects you, and a person that is not afraid to be vulnerable or not afraid to do anything for you because they know a good woman reciprocates and she multiplies. It is no reason to be afraid when you are with a person that reciprocates. You could be a big step in my love. You can do whatever it is that you want to do because it will be reciprocated. But if you were a little ass boy that you're trying to convince that ain't never had a real woman in his life. And to you other women who make it hard for some of the women who have created these boundaries and expectations for settling for less. For those of you who allowed him to come with bare minimum, not do shit, not pay no bills, not provide nothing. Just come relax and chill and fuck on you and hump on you like you was a bass drum. And then he meets somebody that says, oh, you got to take me out. Oh, you ain't going to be laying up. And now he feels like she always nagging. She be asking for too much. I don't know what the fuck she think this is. Hold on. Hold on, sir. I don't know who the fuck you were fucking with before and what they were tolerating or allowed, but we don't do that around here. And I, one thing I know, if y'all done been in a relationship with somebody and you see that they act different with somebody else, you may have had him. Another person will have him a whole nother way, okay? A man will get ready for who he wants to get ready for. Now, the game is to be sold in October since I fuck with y'all. I'm going to tell y'all for free, okay? 
I can, you, it is your job to actively see a man that is trying, actively trying. He ain't got it figured out, but he's trying for you. I said this before, okay? Like, I said this before. It's a lot of things that I could tolerate and accept. A couple things that I can't as a person that can't communicate, a person that isn't in tune with their emotions. They trying to tap into something that they don't even know how to tap in. A person that doesn't know how to express or show any form of intimacy outside of physical and having sex. They just want to hump on you all goddamn day. Don't want to watch no movies with you. Don't want to go on no walks on the parks. He just trying to hump. He don't got no conversation. He don't know how to read out loud. And the one, <laughs> Chad, don't laugh at me. He doesn't know how to read out loud. You got to pay attention to them and they don't know how to read out loud because if you have a baby by them, that's the man that's going to be doing homework with your kid. And that is the same man that's going to be smacking the table like, Timmy had five fucking apples. And you looking like, oh my gosh, don't talk to my baby like that. But he don't know how to read like that. He's getting frustrated because he don't know how to do the goddamn math problem. And then you feeling like, oh my gosh, don't verbally abuse my baby. So with that being said, okay, slapping at the table. You like, damn, I got homework. For now, on, for now on, I'm on homework duty. You just felt real uncomfortable and it was triggering you. Okay. So I lost my train of thought. Okay, it's big. If the only thing you don't know how to do is you're not a good provider, I could teach you that. I could definitely teach you how to log in online to pay some bills. That's super easy. You're not that fun. I could get you to be fun, okay? I could, I'm, I'm super fun where it's though. I could put you in environments. It's certain, this is where my patience level is. A person that doesn't necessarily know how to be a provider, doesn't know how to cater to somebody, doesn't isn't really fun um let me see what else i could tolerate i don't like the way you dress those four things i feel like i could tolerate only because i feel like those aren't things that is like an end all to be all to me i could teach somebody how to be a provider like i could teach you to have more fun and loosen up come on babe like let's go it's gonna be fun it's certain things like i could i could buy you a sweatsuit and this is what i want you to wear when we go out you can wear that dumb shit all throughout the week when you in the crib but when we going out to dinner please don't put it on don't put it on you're with me i want us to coordinate this is what it's going to be but i i can't sit across from somebody and be like tell me what's wrong what's the matter what's bothering you and like nothing i don't do the whole i don't know how to communicate thing i don't do that i don't do the whole i don't I'm not in tune with any other emotion besides anger and frustration. So every time we got a problem, you mad, you want punch walls. Oh no, Hawk, you're not finna be punching walls in my goddamn house. That's not going to be happening. Um, I'm not, and I'm not here to be with a man that every time we have an issue, your natural instinct is to go run to another female or go to run to your homeboys. Boy, if you don't go turn to God, then we're going to have a problem. You better pray on it and pray that God freaking helps you calm down. It's so many things. I feel like we get, we get too old to tolerate. I might have been able to do it in high school and stuff like that. But when you at a place in your life where you value your peace so goddamn much, like you've got to a place in your life where you, le you learn how to create happiness on your own. You learn how to be happy by yourself. You can't really afford to be building with a person that at a snap of a finger will fuck up all the peace that you've created. That's, that's too risky. It's I don't even think people realize how hard it is to be at a place where you you did this all alone. Like, you learn how to enjoy your own company. You learn how to be happy and be content and okay, okay when not having company all the, all the time or going out every single day. For you to love somebody so much that you allow them to come into your life and just start touching shit. And when I say touching shit, this is your, these are your emotions and stuff like that. They just start flipping pages and shit, moving stuff around. I've strategically placed everything in my life the way it needs to be so that I can maneuver through life a happy person a calm person a person that is in a good mental and emotional space i can't afford for you to come around here and think that you're gonna fuck this shit up because it took so long to even get here it took it's a puzzle with 50 fucking thousand pieces i i dare your ass to come over and fuck this goddamn puzzle up it done took me freaking about two years to put together stop playing this little self-love journey that we on with growing and evolving and loving ourselves and not settling as much as everybody likes to make it seem like it's so easy, it's a piece of cake, it's going to be facials and putting cucumbers over your eyes and you're going to love yourself so much and make good. That shit hard and it's lonely and you're going to be horny. Girl, you're going to be, it's going to be long and horny. And you're going to be sad. You're going to be crying. Some days you're going to feel like, am I not good enough? Some days you're going to feel like, what's wrong with me? Some days you're going to feel like, you know, maybe I should go back. Maybe it wasn't that bad. Your mind will start playing tricks on you. It's so confusing at times. 
it's so confusing and I feel like what's so important that while you are on this journey and you figuring shit out and you trying to let people go and you trying to let go of toxic situations and let go of attachments that you got with other people, it's important for you to realize and make sure that you are enjoying your own company and not just spending time alone. It's a difference from being alone and then actually enjoying your company because I enjoy when I go to Marshalls and stuff like that. I'm having a time in my life. Don't call my phone. I'm like, please don't. But before, when I think back on it, when I first started with trying to love me and when I would cry every day, like I was in the house. Like I wasn't really doing shit. I was just in the house. Like I would clean. I wasn't really doing anything at all. I was just trying to pass time and wait to go to work. And this routine of just counting the hours and just, that's why I was sad. I didn't, I didn't like being in my own company. I didn't like being around me because I didn't know me. I didn't know what made me happy and that frustrated me. I didn't know what to do. So being by myself because I, I, I gained all of my worth from the relationships that I was in. And that's where all my purpose and significance to myself came from was my partners. This makes me feel like I got some type of worth. This makes me feel like something. So when I decided that, you know, I'm just going to be by myself and fuck all this and fuck everybody. I'm not having, I'm not giving nobody no pussy. How about that? There's one man and rooted for everybody. How about that? So when I decided that, no, no more, I realized, damn, I don't even know how to be by myself. I've been jumping in and out of relationships and texting people I don't really like and going on dates with people for so goddamn long that what do I, what does Molly like to do? Sheesh. I poured into everybody else and I've morphed into the relation, whoever my, my partner wanted me to be, that I'm a completely different person. I've changed so much for all these people and I don't got shit now. I don't know what to do to make me happy. And that's some sad ass shit to be at, at a place in your life where you don't want to be around you. And when you are, the only thing that you can think about is the fact that you're alone. So make sure you are enjoying your own company. You taking yourself out on a date. You know, you giving yourself affirmations like, damn, girl, you losing weight, ass looking all fat, okay, I like your hair. The things that we look for other people to do for us and get disappointed when they don't make sure we start showing up for ourselves first. So that I'm not even tripping if you don't show up for me because I showed up for me first this morning at 8 o'clock when I looked in the mirror and said, damn, bitch, you glowing. So I know that I showed up for me. So if somebody don't say it to me that day, it's cool. Because I looked out for me this morning. I realized that when I was looking for these praises and these affirmations from the world, I was always coming, feeling like I was getting the short end of the stick. I was always feeling disappointed. I was always feeling like I wasn't getting enough. And it was really because I'm looking for everybody in my life to give me some shit that I need to be giving to me. That's it. So if you're listening today or you just so happen to run across my podcast of an Aries woman, and if you don't like Aries, I'm pretty sure about it. Yeah, I'm glad I told y'all that towards the end because I'm quite the fucking comedian, as I said before. If you found yourself listening to this tonight, I hope that I hope that you learned something. And if you are at a place in your life where you feel like, yeah, I'm tired of being alone. I don't know what to do. I hope that you realize how valuable and important that you are so that you don't look for other people to fill these voids. And when you get these people in your life, you don't feel like, damn, I thought it was going to have a different feeling and I'm still not happy. You know, I thought if I had this or this person did this or I got this nice guy, I would feel complete. I hope that you are at a place in your life where your cup, I wish I had a prop. A prop. This ain't a good prop because it ain't full the way it needs to be full. But hypothetically speaking, if it was full, this glass that I'm holding in my hand right now, if you're listening. When your cup of self-love is running over with love, And you feel like, you know what, I have so much love for me right now that I'm able to give to another person. I can pour into you and I still have so much because it's overflowing. Then I can be receptive and I can be at a place in my life where I want to accept love from somebody else. Then I will know that I wasn't at a place where my cup barely had anything in it like it does now because this juice is really good. And I'm looking for somebody to pour so much into me to compensate for what I can't do for me. And a lot of times that's what we, that's what ended up happening. We want people to compensate for what we can't give to ourselves at, in our, at our lives right now. And we get mad when they don't show up. You can't really expect somebody to make you happy when you don't know how to make you happy. I feel like that that's so selfish for you to even ask somebody to do that for you. And you've never been able to do it for yourself. So to wrap this up tonight, if you've been listening on our first episode of Mixing It Up with Maui and the name will change whenever I decide what the name is. If y'all want to pressure me for a podcast. Um... <laughs> 
If you are listening, I hope that you learned something. I hope that you love yourself a little bit more tomorrow. I hope if you fucking with somebody you ain't supposed to be fucking with and you left him alone. I hope that if you laying next to somebody right now that you don't trust and that you don't forgive, yeah, you give yourself some time and some space to heal and stop trying to put band-aids over some shit. Wounds, they need air to breathe, okay, and to heal properly. So that is that. I hope you enjoyed my podcast and good night.